today's video, I'm going to show you guys my setup and I'm going to show you how, if you want to, you can get into a self-filming setup for under 300 bucks. I'm going to show you exactly what gear you need to make this happen. I'm going to show you how I use it, how I attach everything to the tree, and then I'm going to talk about the pros and cons for each piece of gear specifically so that you can, you know, kind of look at everything and tell if this is a good setup for you or if it's not. But for the beginner, for someone who's, you know, just wanting to dip their feet into self-filming, it's not a lot of money to spend and you get some pretty, in my opinion, high quality stuff. So let's jump into the gear that you're going to need if you want to try this type of setup. The first piece and the most important piece is the camera. I run a Panasonic HC-180KV. Easy to miss that, so I'm going to say it again. It's a Panasonic HC-180KV. It's a really, really nice HD camera. It's got a 90 times optical zoom, and for the money, it's pretty hard to beat. How I'm attaching that camera to the tree is a Hawk Hot Hard camera on, and it comes with the base and everything. I'm then using my smartphone for an action cam, and I'm attaching the smartphone to the tree by using a smartphone tripod, sorry, by using a smartphone tripod mount and a buckle. So the cost for all this, the camera runs about 200 bucks. You can find it lower than that if you're deal shopping. The Hawk Hot Hard Arm runs about 60. The tripod mount for a phone, they run about 20. You can sometimes find them cheaper. And the buckle system that I used to attach that to the tree, it runs about 10, so you're at 280, 290, uh, maybe even less than that if you do some Black Friday shopping or something like that. So in my opinion, it's a really, really good value for the money. You can completely film your hunts and do some really good quality hunts. And you can do all this for under 300 bucks. All right, so I'm gonna backtrack now and talk about some of the gear and the pros and cons to that. The first piece of gear we're gonna cover is the camera. The camera is really light, it's cost effective, it has a 90 times optical zoom, it's really easy to use. You basically just point and shoot it, button to record, same button it's recording. Um, it's got a built-in mic that's pretty decent with it too, and it records in HD footage. That's all really good stuff. There is a couple of uh, cons to this camera too, and I'm going to tell you what they are. So the first one is that the optical zoom is both a blessing and a curse without a manual focus. What I mean by that is, is say you're filming a deer um, and you're on a field edge and there's some brush between you and the deer. A lot of times that camera is going to try to focus on the brush between you and the deer instead of the deer and it makes the animal you're trying to film kind of fuzzy. And you got to kind of tinker around and film a pocket to, or find a pocket to film through and it, it can just make getting footage of an animal hard if you're hunting somewhere with thick underbrush or you know a, a thick canopy where you're going to have to be filming through some stuff. The second con to this camera is that when you're zoomed in, the camera motor makes a noise uh, and the camera picks it up in the video. Now it's not very loud, it's not anything that will ruin a video, but it is there and it is noticeable. So it takes a little bit of um, crafty video editing to kind of hide that or mask it a little bit. Other than that, it's a really decent camera. And uh, in my opinion, the pros far outweigh the cons, especially with the cost coming into effect. The next piece of gear I want to touch on is the Hawk Hot Hard Camera Arm. The pros to this and everything else in this video, if you're not catching the theme, is that it's super cheap. It also comes with a fluid head, and it's another piece of gear that you're already going to know how to use. It's a ratchet strap and an arm that goes into a bracket. The cons to it are that it's heavy. The camera arm and the base are both heavy. I think they may be just as heavy as my stand. I haven't weighed them yet, but they definitely add a lot of weight to, to the pack. Um, the second part about that is I tried when I initially got this camera arm to run it with a Versa strap to get away from using the ratchet mechanism. Couldn't do it, it wouldn't get tight enough. If you're gonna run this camera arm, you pretty much have to use the ratchet strap to get it tight enough for that camera arm not to wobble when you're moving it around. Other than that, it's a really, really solid piece of equipment. Again, you can't beat it for the price. Um, the next thing is the, the smartphone mount and the buckle, and there's really no pros or cons to that. It's super easy to set up. And, and it's quiet and I really never have any problems with either one of those so that's not really hard to set up at all. Um, the last thing I want to touch base on in this video before I show you guys how all this looks in the tree is I want to show you some video footage uh, and what this camera is capable of so I'm just going to spend the next little segment of this video throwing out some uh, you know animals at different ranges, low light, direct sunlight, 
uh, things like that so you guys can get an idea what kind of footage this camera actually shoots. Dude, that was intense. I didn't think he was going to come out of that tree. I didn't either. I got a good shot on him right there. Uh, I did hit him in the front shoulder. He wasn't 
when he was running away, he wouldn't step on that leg. So we're probably going to sit here about 15, 20 minutes tracking. What a roller coaster of a season it has been. I've had the worst luck this season out of any of the seasons I've hunted so far. This guy. I got down out of my stand and there had been deer down here for some time. I never would have seen him from up there. Snuck up to the field edge, put the crosshairs on, wanted about 100, and I think. I'm pretty sure I heard her crash. I'll bring it down just in case. I think she'll be right over there. I'm just kind of walking over there and looking for blood as I go. The last thing I want to touch base on this video is how everything looks in the tree and how I set up the, you know, the camera and the smartphone. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to do that and uh, show you guys in the following clip. This is how I set up my action cam in the tree and how I set it up just kind of depends on the tree. If I'm in a double trunk tree and I can get it in front of me, facing back at me, I'll do that. Um, if it's only a single trunk tree, I'll, I'll usually try to get it as high as I can and point it down at me like you see this one. And it works really, really well for getting some action cam footage, which I'll show some of that footage uh, in other parts of this video, but it usually goes as high as I can reach above me in the tree, or if I'm in a double trunk tree, I'll put it across, you know, the other, the other side and face them back at me. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. Hopefully uh, there was some good information in there that helped some of you guys out. If there were some questions uh, that I didn't answer that you may have, make sure to throw them in the comments and I will respond. And as always, I say this at the end of every video, if you guys like what I'm doing, make sure you like the video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit the notifications icon because I have content coming out all the time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.